Okay, so to start, I have my rounds, which I've pre-cut, my batting, which I've also pre-cut to this round shape, and then my canvas. So what I'm going to do is just cut maybe about, I'd say an inch all the way around my canvas. And I know this is probably one of the more nerve wracking um, parts of finishing, but if you are really worried about it, you can always cut a bigger circle and just slowly get closer. Okay, so I think this is probably still a little too big. I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit more. And it's not a perfect circle, but it is close enough. And now what we're going to do is cut out little plateaus all the way around. So basically what we will want to do is to be able to um, fold our canvas and not have it kind of overlapping like that. So we're just gonna cut out little triangles all the way around. Don't get too close. Typically I don't get closer than like, um, you know, within a few stitches. You don't want your tabs to be too small. And you can always cut it smaller later on if you find that it's too big. But, you know, if you cut it too far and too small, then it's really hard to undo that. Okay. And they don't have to be you know, perfectly even. I will say try and space them out best you can, but uh, if they're not 100% even, that is okay. And just make sure you're not cutting the last two crosses before your stitched piece, just because you don't want it to unravel as you're working on it. And again, we're going to do this kind of at live speed. So if you want to, if you have a piece and you want to finish it along with me, definitely feel free to pause at any point if you need more time. Um, but hopefully this is going to be a slow enough pace that you can kind of pull it up and do it along with me. Okay, if you have something like this, never pull because that can unravel your canvas. Just go back in and cut it. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. Okay, so here is my cut canvas. And then what I'm going to do now is just flip it over and fold all the tabs just as close to the stitch piece as I can without rolling any of the stitches under. So basically, as you can see, that's folded over. And if I set this on the table, the stitch piece would just kind of graze the table, but not roll under and touch it. Okay. Okay, perfect. So this is kind of what mine looks like with all the tabs put under and then you can go closer wherever you need to. Great. So then now I'm going to take my pre-cut round and my batting, which I have no idea where I put up. Okay, you guys will have to excuse me. I have no idea where I just put my batting. 
but there were two pieces so I'm just gonna cut one more and the way I cut mine is I just cut a piece that's much bigger than the round that I am using and then just trim around the round trying my best to stay parallel to the round as opposed to going under okay so this is close enough and I have my second piece here okay so then what you're going to do is turn your stitched piece upside down and get your round with your batting and make sure it's centered um, if you want to put a little dab of glue you can I typically don't just if it's something that someone is paying me to finish because I know there is that desire to you know stay away from things with glue so no worries and then once you get it centered which is what I'm doing now Okay, perfect. So once you have it centered the way you want it to, you're going to clip it together. So then to do that, just pull the tab gently and you wanna make sure that stitched piece is just kind of grazing the table. And then again with these clips, if you're using glue, make sure you have one direction that is always going to be your needle point side and one that's always going to be your glue side. So that way you don't accidentally glue onto your needle point. And now I'm just going to kind of turn this under all the way around and just clip it, making sure it kind of grazes the table. This is a really great time if you need to make any adjustments, maybe your board's not perfectly centered and you find that when you pull it under, you're not getting, you know, that table grazing, either it's going too far or uh, not far enough, you can kind of move your board around at this time. Since we're not using glue, it's not, you know, permanently stuck in any place, which is really nice. And as you can see, you know, when we cut these tabs, it did allow us to kind of overlap them a little bit more smooth. Now, typically, I will say um, one thing that you can do to ensure a more even wrap is to go opposite directions. So if you pull a tab here, then do a tab down here, do a tab here, do a tab here. That will just ensure that it remains, you know, as centered as possible, which I'm not doing it for this one because I didn't think about it, honestly, but the piece was pretty well blocked to begin with and I did not have concerns about it, you know, moving or being uneven. And I like these clips a lot because they don't leave any marks on your piece. So it really allows you to, um, you know, kind of stitch it as Finish it um, however you want without leaving those pin marks through your needle point piece, which I don't love. Okay. So what I'm kind of doing now as I'm pulling these tabs is just making sure that my piece is centered. Um, because we're not using glue, you know, we can kind of tug and pull as needed, which is what I am doing right now. And you will have more opportunity to do that too because the way that we will add our thread is very um, tug and pull friendly. So it'll give us an opportunity to go back in and make kind of minor adjustments where needed.
So we have our piece clipped. You can see it looks really round and it'll look more round kind of as we go on and we have all our tabs under here. So now what we're going to do is just lace it um, all together. So what I use for this typically is just kind of whatever I have left over. So I have some of this white pearl left over, so I'm gonna use that. Um, I like to use thicker floss for this because I find when I use sewing thread, it kind of cuts through the canvas. And so thicker thread allows me to distribute the tension a little bit more evenly. So I made a little knot. Um, I have no concerns about the knot because when I finish it, you won't even notice that there is a knot in there. Um, if you are someone who's worried, you can, of course, you know, use a little dab of glue or something just to keep it there. But what I'm going to do is go through one of these tabs. I'm going to go in and then back out. And that's really just, again, to distribute the tension that I'm pulling. And then I'm not going to pull it, you know, super tight that I rip the canvas, but I am going to want to make sure there's not any slack. And it helps to keep the clips on because it ensures the tab is going to be pulled. So then now the way I do it is I will go basically opposite of that tab. And then... Pull it through and then I'm just gonna add this clip back to ensure it stays in place and then the next one I'm going to move over one tab so I just keep doing that until I get all the way around it looks really messy um, it uses a lot of thread and it's slow there is another option where you can kind of sew like around the tab so instead of going across i go to the next one 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 all the way back and then pull it to kind of gather it almost like a flower that one is a lot faster it uses less thread but i prefer this method because it allows you to ensure that your image is centered and you're going to have tension from the opposite side pulling the tab so that way it really keeps it centered. You can still make minor adjustments as needed, but you know, if you have maybe something that is not perfectly blocked or anything like that, this can actually really help ensure that you get that final shape that you want. So it takes more time and more thread, but I think, you know, with how much work we've already put into stitching our piece, there is nothing wrong with taking a little bit of extra time for finishing. Okay, so I started here. I'm gonna move over one on this side and then over one on this side. So basically we just want to have almost like a, a circle all the way around. And again, the idea is that you are using the tension from the tab across the way to keep your tab where you want it. Okay. So I'm going to go to the right one and then to the right one down here as well. So again, you wanna make sure it's tight, but not so tight that you break the canvas. And if you need to take the clip off for a second, you can, you know, get your thread under there, pull it through. And then put that clip back on. And we're gonna go one more to the right. Now, I know you're probably wondering, oh, well, if I do this, do I need to make sure that I have an even number of tabs so that way I always can pull into the tab directly across from it? And the answer to that is no. While an even number of tabs is great and you will find it really helpful, you can go through a tab more than once if needed. So if you cut an odd number, that's perfectly fine. Just go through your first tab twice. And 
if we have an odd amount, I can show you what that means. If not, I'll walk you through kind of what that would look like. And as you're going through these tabs, you want to make sure that you're kind of going through the middle of the tab. You don't want to go in too close to the needle point because if you pull too hard and you break the canvas, you want to have some wiggle room there. So that way you have more canvas to work with still. Um, and then you don't want to go too far at the end of the tab because you can rip it more easily that way. And again, I'm just using some leftover pearl, but you can really use whatever you have left behind. Uh, it's a really great way to bust your stash, in my opinion. You know, if you've just got a piece or two here, that's not really enough for any projects, but you, of course, don't want it to go to waste. And I'm just going to keep going to the right, pull it all the way, put in a clip to keep it there, go right back across. So as you can see, this is a lot slower than just going through all the tabs once and pulling, but I think, you know, it is worth the effort just because it will help almost block your piece as you go too. And it'll keep it in that shape forever. So when you go around the tabs versus across, you don't have that nice tension from across the way keeping it put. Okay, so this thread is coming to an end, so I am just going to pull it through and add my little clip. And tie a knot. Or actually, I'm just gonna add another piece and tie them together. Because I use boards on both sides, these little knots on the inside, you won't notice them. Um, because before anywhere the knot might come out, there's going to be a board keeping it kind of flattened. Okay, and then I'm just gonna, again, go to the right. And one thing I did not mention, but is so important, is to make sure that your workstation is clean. And so, before I do any finishing, I wipe down the area just to make sure that there's no uh, crumbs or liquids or stains or anything that could stain the canvas just because you know you guys can see how much time it's spending face down on my work surface okay so it looks like we did have an odd amount of tabs which actually is perfectly fine so i will show you guys how that works So this is my last little tab. He's just all by his lonesome. So I'm gonna pull the thread through. Then of course clip it to keep it where I want. And then I am just going to go through, sorry about that. Okay, so then I am just going to go through one of the tabs opposite of it. So I picked this one. And so as you can see, we've gone through this tab twice. That's perfectly fine. Um, as long as you don't pull too hard, it shouldn't make a huge difference. And then I'm just going to go back through the first tab and tie a knot and we will be all set to go. So to tie the knot, I'm just going through what I pulled 
make like a little loop. And pull it through. I'm just going to cut off the extra and we should be good to go. So now we take off all our clips. So now these clips can leave little indents. Um, that's fine. With time, it'll kind of pucker out so you won't even notice it. You can also just kind of rub them out too. Okay, so that is our little round and now's a really great time if you want to make any adjustments maybe you know the image is a little tilted or not centered you can just kind of do it with your hands but there you go we have our little round and then now what we'll do is you know the same thing for the back and then we will attach it all with cording uh, I hope you guys find it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And then I have been toying with the idea of maybe offering like private classes. So let me know if that's something that you might be interested in. Um, and if you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks guys, bye.